What's good, my beautiful kings and queens? It's I, Winnie Buensi. Welcome to my channel. If this is the first time of you watching me, if you're an oldie and you're back to watch this face, thank you so much. I thought today I would do a very quick video. To be honest, I have touched down on this quite a few times. However, I've noticed that quite a few people have been sending me comments, sending me questions. So I thought, you know what? There's no harm in me going back into detail in regards to what I'm going to go into. So I have seborrheic dermatitis and I also have locks as well. So in regards to how long I've had locks for, it's coming up to 10 years, wow damn this summer's gonna be 10 years and to be honest with the whole dandruff thing i've had dandruff for as long as i can remember however it becoming subbroke dermatitis which i like to describe as it being dandruff on steroids because what happens is i experience it predominantly on my edges area and what the best example for me to give is when you get your hair relaxed or if you used to get your hair relaxed like i did and you would experience scalp burns that's what i experienced on the edges of um my head so it looks like scalp burns and then it's like really disgusting gross flakes now already if you experience dandruff it is hell hell of annoying but to have it on steroids and have some dermatitis and you also have locks i feel like that's a whole different experience because what i found was at one point my scalp used to be really really itchy so obviously i'll be scratching it and then you've got like all these really massive yucky burnt looking flakes and it's going everywhere it's going all over your locks and it's just awful and it took me a very long time for me to even realize that i had subbroic dermatitis i was watching a fellow youtuber's video and then i kind of piece two and two together like yo that's what i've got so literally i have mentioned this before but listen i don't mind going over these things at all in regards to what i use to wash my hair so i use head and shoulders normally i opt for the classic clean however i have such a thing for citrusy smells so at the minute i am using the citrus one so i use this you know it's the usual thing dampen your hair make sure your hair is wet go in with this repeat the process and then after i do that i then do something called nezerol um the best way for me to describe nezerol for me is it's basically a medicated um shampoo if you like and you just allow it to just sit in your scalp now when i first started using nezerol like an idiot i made the mistake of using it to wash my whole hair i don't know you know what sometimes i don't read you know but we thank god for growth literally all you do a little bit goes a long way you just pop a little bit on your scalp allow it to sit in your scalp it says here three to five minutes which is exactly what i do sometimes i may allow it to uh, sit in just for a little bit longer and then you wash it out in regards to how often i wash my hair at first it's it's been varying when i first started using nezerol i was you know washing it like every two weeks or so and then when i got it under control i thought Mm, okay baby girl you've got this under control you can stretch it out a little bit um in turn i think i was kind of overdoing it with the whole stretching it out so what happened was my subbroke dermatitis flared up again since then what i have been doing is i've gone back to washing my hair every two weeks maximum at a push three weeks so at present i've got this beautiful styling that butter chocolates did for me which i absolutely adore and i'm currently filming on a sunday so it would make this i've had this in for two weeks and one day what i want to do is oh i said it's a sunday oh my bad actually it's a saturday sorry it's a bank holiday weekend thingy so i'm getting all the days mixed up it's a saturday so i've had this hairstyle in for about two weeks i would say and what i'm looking to do is tomorrow i'm just looking to take it out even though you know what it looks it looks it still looks so neat however um i am gonna take it out tomorrow i think either tomorrow no it's gonna be tomorrow uh just so that i can rock it out curly for about a week and then i'm gonna wash it so that will bring it up to three weeks and for me i just think at this moment in time of my journey it is imperative that i have my subbroic dermatitis under control because I am not an expert i want to make it very clear i am not an expert i feel like sometimes you guys ask me questions as if i'm an expert if you're experiencing a severe dandruff you're experiencing seborrheic dermatitis please 
talk to a professional i am only a youtuber i just share my experiences my thoughts and opinions and opinions are not facts do you get what i'm saying so um i definitely definitely recommend you all to speak to a professional if you have certain questions because i don't have all the answers however what i find is at this specific moment of my lock journey, I just want to keep my subrook dermatitis under control. So because of that, like I said, I wash my hair every two to maximum three weeks. I do not go longer than that. I also want to make it very clear that if you are experiencing like severe dandruff, subrook dermatitis, you might also want to revisit your diet because what I found is on occasions when, for example, I've been eating way too much takeaway or I've been consuming a lot of sugar, and me saying this is really gonna hurt my spirit it's gonna it's gonna hurt my spirit eating certain things like seafood i'm a pescatarian right and so that basically means that i don't eat chicken i don't eat beef i don't eat pork my main thing is seafood you know salmon mackerel all of them things they're good stuff great i've noticed maybe over the last i want to say about last six months but on occasions when I've been consuming a lot of prawns, my subrook dermatitis completely hits the roof. So, as you lot have seen, or so I'm assuming that you've seen, you know, when I go on holiday and stuff, you guys know, listen, I love me my prawns. However, there's limits to this. So I say all of this just to say your diet plays a very important part. If you're not drinking enough water, you're consuming too much juices, you're eating too much sugary stuff, like too much takeaway, or there's just something that you've started to eat and maybe you don't normally eat it, you've just started eating it and you've noticed that your body is reacting in a certain way, be mindful and just watch that and start seeing how things pan out when you start reducing your consumption of certain things or when you start removing certain things out of your diet. I thought it was imperative for me to make this video because you know a lot of people are telling me that they're thinking about getting locks but because they have subrook dermatitis or they have bad dandruff issues it's preventing them from doing so and I understand your struggles. I understand however there's so many options and there's so many ways that you can overcome this whole dandruff issues, the whole subrook dermatitis thing. It is very important for you to get under control because what I've found is, I think in the past when I haven't had it under control, I've seen that it started to take a toll in regards to my hair. So some parts of my hair might start to thin out or it would grow but it's not grown as full as other parts of my hair it's just very weird it's very weird it's very frustrating also in regards to what i use to retwist so as you lot know or you don't know i've gone back to using um my usual babes that kind of helped to get my hair intact in the beginning stages of my journey so butter chalk locks does my locks and she's always asked me you know do you mind if i use gel or do you rather i use an oil when she does my locks i opt for her to use gel so we use talia wajid's locking gel it doesn't irritate my scalp it doesn't cause flakes quite a few of you have been asking me how have I, how have i been finding it my hair doesn't get irritated by the gel thankfully and it doesn't cause any flakes the only time that it has caused flakes is when i was trying to experiment with the whole slicking down my edges or laying down my edges and then it would create a lot of flakes but in regards to just like twisting uh, my locks it doesn't i don't know if that's just because you know from time to time i like to spritz my hair and oil my scalp and things like that but that's where we're at with that it doesn't irritate me but please do keep in mind that certain things that may work well for me might not work well for you and vice versa and all of that good stuff in regards to what i now use for my hair in terms of like keeping my my locks and my scalp and all of that looking nice and shiny and healthy like it is right now so i use talia wajid's african healing oil it's amazing honestly i can't remember how long i've been using it for now i did a whole review on this but see this 
absolutely magical i love the smell i love the consistency i love the fact it doesn't irritate my scalp i love the fact that it doesn't flare my seborrheic dermatitis i love the fact that i feel like with this as well it's also been promoting a lot of hair growth i love the ingredients so just a couple of things that are in here it's almond oil vitamin e oil sunflower palm oil soybean oil it's just amazing and one thing i really love about them is also oh, when i um tag them or speak about them on my socials as well they're like so friendly always interact with me and all of that good stuff but honestly this has been sensational i don't use it often in your average week i probably um oil my scalp let's just say once maximum twice a week because i think it's unnecessary to be doing it like every single day that would irritate me if anything however absolutely adore this product i can't big it up enough it just makes my hair just feel just so moisturized and i really really love it and then in regards to what i put on my actual lock so let me just explain i use talia wajid's african healing oil for my scalp and then when it's a remainder in my hands i will just pat it into my locks but in regards to actually keeping my locks moisturized i use heritage stores rose water which is this and then I just have your pure vitamin E oil. I'll put a couple drops into it. Give it a good shake. Whoop. Damn. But yeah, I give it a good shake. And then I just use it to spritz my locks. Honestly, on average, how often do I spritz my locks? I don't even count. Maybe two times. Maybe three times. But that's literally what I do in regards to trying to just have my seborrheic dermatitis under control and trying to keep my my looks um you know nice healthy not just looking healthy but also feeling healthy as well one of the main things is your diet your diet plays a massive massive role i really want to say guys if you have seborrheic dermatitis or you have dandruff please do not allow it to deter you do your research there are so many things out there that are catered to us that will help to control this issue and yeah that's basically all i wanted to say guys but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful if you have any questions drop it below but like i said please also do speak to a professional if you are suffering with seborrheic dermatitis and maybe you've tried a variety of things and things are not working for you but yeah until my next video take care be good see you